ES Audio. From the Evening Standard in London, I'm Mark Blunden and this is The Leader. Thousands of London households are being hit with a fresh property squeeze as lenders hike interest rates again. Now, according to financial data firm Money Facts, the average two year fixed rate mortgage deal costs £35 more per month than it did a couple of weeks ago. It comes after TSB withdrew its 10-year fixed rate, while Coventry Building Society is set to increase its two, three and five-year deals. The hikes are being fuelled by inflation figures still in the doldrums, which is stubbornly stuck at 8.7%. Meanwhile, a record fifth of first-time buyers have signed up for mortgages of more than 35 years, meaning many have signed up to pay off home debt past retirement and into their 70s. So what's the current health of house prices? First, let's hear from Luke Hitch. Moore, who's Investment Director at Aberdeen. House prices have been falling over the last year, partly due to the increase people have had to put up with in Bank of England base rate. And that's been feeding through into mortgage rates quite dramatically. And if you think 300,000 people a month are coming off a fixed rate mortgage that was a lot cheaper than it is now, that's starting to hit affordability for mortgages, which has an immediate feed through in terms of house prices. He goes on to explain the impact of the current climate on first-time buyers. First-time buyers could be the part of the mortgage market where the most stress is seen. It's where the lower income cohorts uh, tend to be. You know, if you're buying your first house, you're maybe in your first, probably second or third job, bearing in mind how much house prices have moved compared to where earnings are. Um, and that that's hard. You know, they've been hit with cost of living crisis. They've been hit with higher mortgage rates. Getting on the ladder is going to be increasingly tough. And that may be the case for the next year. At the same time, campaigners fear no-fault evictions could continue to rise, fueling homelessness even as the government prepares to ban the practice amid spiralling rents and interest rates. Figures from the Ministry of Justice show no-fault evictions claims rose by 15.8% compared to the first three months of 2022 and were well above pre-pandemic levels, returning to their highest point since 2017. To find out what more financial pain we'll have to endure if rates go even higher, how Britain's stacking up against Europe, and about the ongoing Trust mini-budget hangover, we're joined by Dr Jeevan Sander, Head of Economics at the New Economics Foundation. Jeevan, what's Monday's interest rates latest? So the latest is that basically, look, as interest rates have risen in this country, as you see now, interest rates rise, certainly since last autumn, banks are now starting to take products off the shelves and increase the rates that they're sitting at. And the kind of the big headline is this, you know, before we had, you know, the trust mini budget last autumn, interest rate about 2.5%, now at kind of 5.5-ish. And basically around two and a half thousand pounds for the average kind of mortgage at this point in time. So actually hugely expensive uh, time for people. And banks now reacting and withdrawing even more products. So, you know, the end of it all is if you are a homeowner, you're looking to buy a house, you are fundamentally paying a lot more money in housing costs. And you will do as and when kind of you have to renew that mortgage. You're currently on a fixed deal. The question everyone will be asking, what's the year ahead forecast regarding further potential rate hikes? It's not great. I mean, I think the Bank of England has kind of taken this view, which, you know, I don't think is, is the right view, is saying, well, look, we have to keep raising rates. And from my perspective, look, why is it today inflation so high? It's because for the past decade, we haven't invested in renewables. So we're very dependent on natural gas, which meant that actually we're very impacted by rising natural gas prices. If we had renewables, our energy cost would be lower. If we had home insulation, our energy cost would be lower. And that would also lead to lower inflation. But kind of changing interest rates doesn't really change the kind of causes of rising prices. But unfortunately, the bank does at this point in time appear to take a different view. It looks like we are looking at further rate hikes. So unfortunately, it looks like it's still going to be a painful time ahead, even more painful uh, for British homeowners and households up and down the country. With the increase of 35-year mortgages, what are the long-term debt risks? These deals have doubled since, since 2021. As you say, the longer term that your mortgage is, not only do you have kind of more risk of not being able to pay it back because something might happen, like you say, in your 60s or your 70s by the time that term comes to pass. But on the other side, of course, you are just paying a lot more money than you kind of would be if you had a short term mortgage. That's both because income is not high enough relative to housing. How has the annual house buying season that usually starts in April been impacted by the hikes? What we've seen kind of is house prices 
began to fall last April, which is something we didn't read really, last month rather than we haven't really seen usually at this point in time. And look, you know, as something becomes more expensive, it also means that people uh, begin to buy it kind of less, if you like. And that's certainly what we're seeing in the housing market. It's not immune to that. We also did see huge increases in house prices during COVID, uh, very low interest rates. People had a lot of savings that would pump inside the housing market. And so we are seeing them fall a little bit. Uh, on the other hand, though, we still have a huge shortfall of supply of the houses not being where we need them to be. So certainly a, a a bit of a fall that we see where you kind of see house price rises. Uh, but on the other side, we're not really looking at kind of a house price crash in the months ahead. What's the impact on the buy-to-let market? Buy-to-let mortgages are just simply more expensive. And so either those people who have the mortgage or who are trying to enter, their prices are going up. And so certainly you know, it's becoming more expensive. And at that point in time, look, buy-to-let mortgage holders kind of have two options, one of which is to try and pass through that rent increase. And we are certainly seeing... Uh, rental prices rise inside the UK. And the other one, of course, is is to sell up as well. And so fundamentally, you know, this just makes housing more expensive. So what happens in cities like London as the rents increase while wages stagnate? The overall effect is that, you know, those people who could be working in major cities simply can't afford to do so. People can't live in the place they need to, to work. It reduces economic prosperity because you're not getting people in the right jobs as to where they need to be. Also reduces kind of happiness and well-being because commuting times become longer. But the overall thing is this, right? When if housing becomes more expensive to income and everyone needs to live in a house, it fundamentally makes people more more miserable. You know, either not the further away than they need to be, or the place they need to is much smaller than they actually need, or what's more likely it's both. It's both tidy and far away. It makes us more miserable. It, it makes us poor. It's making life more difficult for us all. Let's go to the ads coming up. Are corporations profiteering from a weak economy? Why not hit rate and follow in the meantime? Welcome back. Jeevan, are consumers still feeling the impact of that infamous Trust Quarteng mini budget last year? The short answer is yes. I mean, look, what we what we saw at that time was we saw kind of interest rates in the in the UK spike. What we're still seeing is they're still higher in the UK compared to let's say Germany or the United States. Particularly look at the spread or the difference between the two. Uh, what you see is kind of a difference in those interest rates of about a percentage point or even more. And because of that, because interest rates are higher in the UK, because basically people looked at UK and gone, there is no stability here. This government is is incompetent. They are, you know, in one sense, asking the UK for more money for interest rates to hold UK debt. And that's still costing us today and you know that percentage point if you like probably a bit more than a percentage point actually you look at it it's about a thousand pounds a year extra on top so again it's just another cost that we are still in that we're still feeling the the consequences of that what are some of the wider factors needed to bring inflation down in the short term? I mean, in, in the short term, look, the, the main thing is these are long-term drivers. actually quite difficult, I think, at this point in time to kind of pull a lever. We saw some of it, if you like, automatically with the, the energy price cap freeze. You know, the question is, why are we so exposed to these kind of forces that we're seeing? And really, those are, you know, home insulation renewables. And the real thing is, how do you stop being buffeted by those things? And more broadly, look, you invest in parts of the the country and if you like our future prosperity to get prices down we talk a lot or kind of people on one side we talk about supply side economics actually yeah but investing in your productive capacity is important to get costs down and actually that lack of investment is what's making things far more expensive here in britain today are you seeing any examples of profiteering well the, the clearest one is going to be the oil and gas giants i mean you know it doesn't cost any more to get oil out of the North Sea. It doesn't cost anyone to get natural gas out of the, at the North Sea. And what we've seen is huge profits fundamentally coming out of the British households, you know, two shell and BP in the North Sea, which is an obscene way to do it, which is why kind of, you know, you do want to have an incredibly high windfall tax to kind of get those profits back and put them back into British household po- pockets. On the other side of it, look, in terms of where we're sitting, I mean, I think we, there has to be more if you like evidence to kind of show, it's certainly true that look, when prices are are rising, firms can kind of rise a bit a bit faster if they if they want to. But we're not really seeing, as far as I can see, this being the, the kind of primary cause of what's happening. You know, the primary cause is around energy. There's more on this story in the Evening Standard newspaper and online at standard.co.uk. That's the leader. We're back on Tuesday at four pm.